Hello and welcome to the GMBN Tech Show. On the show this week, we have some new workshop tech to keep your place looking clean. We check out some of the latest and greatest from the Red Bull Rampage. Some drool-worthy additions from Abbey Tools. Oh, and some interesting developments actually from the Shimano camp. Okay, so straight into news, and first up this week is, yep, there's another new bike from Norco. Another so, new bike from Norco. I'll tell you what, Norco, I've, <laughs> I've always had a thing for... They must do 80, 90 hour weeks. They, they don't do. give up. Like, I, like, that, so those guys, um, they're one of the biggest bike manufacturers in Canada. They make an amazing array of bikes. We just see their cool stuff, but mm. they actually make shopping bikes, kids' bikes, BMX bikes, literally everything. Huge brand. And we also saw Bryn Atkinson everywhere last week. Absolutely flying yeah. on that super short travel one. And now I've got this. This is the Sight. So this is bike comes in at 27 and a half inch wheels and a 29 inch version. Uh, it's a carbon frame with an alloy rear end. Uh, also available in an alloy model and also a kids model and a woman's specific model too. But have a look on the screen now and you're going to see some cool images of Sam Blankensop shredding on one of these bikes. Some very cool things going on. So it's got a carbon front triangle, as I just mentioned. It's available in four sizes, small through to extra large. Uh, the reach across the sizes there is 45 up to 515, so it's a nice, healthy reach across all those sizes. And as we've seen with Norco already with their previous bikes, they're adapting their chainstay lengths and everything. Again, five mil increments between bike sizing. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing That's grows with the rider. Tune, yeah. yeah, and it's, it's such a sensible thing, and I still don't know why more bike manufacturers don't do it, to be honest, because it puts bigger riders in the same position as a smaller rider would be on the bike. The perfect position for weight bias. Um, there's a few more shots on screen now. So you've got a 63 and a half degree head angle on the 27 and a half. 64 on the 29. It's got a 37 mil offset on the 27 and a half and a 42 on the 29. Um, change their length goes from 430 up to 445. Um, and then there's the kids model. So that was a really cool bike and there's loads more to it anyway, but the kids one, 27 and a half inch wheels, 140, 150 bike. And again, this is sort of tuned for kids specifically. So youth tuned suspension on there. So think lighter compression, uh, perhaps even lighter oil in those forks so they can rebound a little bit quicker under a little weight of little kids. Yeah, I still focus on the rider line geometry as well. Um, I think Norco are on it. Yeah, the they're, they're really forging themselves a really clear brand identity. Similar to how Common Style have. You know yeah, what I mean? absolutely. Just yeah. really clear. Yeah. This is what we're here to do. Gravity focused yeah. riding. And I mean, all their bikes really I do. Mean, it, uh, it's really well known how good Common Cell are, but I still think Norco go under the radar for a lot of people. Yeah, I think you're um, I've right. got to say, for um, I reckon they're a hot tip for a bike for next year if you're looking at a new bike. I reckon they make some really good stuff. Well, there's enough choice out, certainly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, next up is something that I've noticed both our hearts are kind of in this. Uh, we're looking at the Kaizen foam, which you see in workshops. Mm. Uh, everywhere, especially where you cut out the foam in your in your tool chest and you can sink in the tools. It does look you know, majorly OCD, isn't it? Super Let's nice. It. I probably don't trust myself. I don't know if I'm I'm, I'm artistic enough to do a good job. Uh, well, I was to actually make the cuts. Yeah, correctly. I mean it's just tracing paper, really. I mean I'm just I'm <laughs> going to say <laughs> how, how hard can it be? Like we could do this. Come on, <laughs> yeah. they can bleed breaks. I'm sure we can do it. But, it. but it's expensive stuff. It is. And I did notice at the weekend, just have a little rummage around on Instagram, shadow foam. Um, I've seen a few people tagging them, I've not really clicked through. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Shadow Foam, you can see it on the screen now. Uh, this is their Instagram page, so go and give them a follow because there's loads of cool ideas on how you can use the stuff. And it seems to be, unless I've got the wrong end of the stick, it seems to be better value, or at least better, lower priced. Mm -hmm. uh, you get a lot more for the money. So there's 15 colour options in Ooh. it. So both the top colour and the colour you cut into. Yes. So you can colour code your toolkits, that is, that's like it's all, nice. over, all over that. Uh, two depths, there's 30 mil deep and 50 mil deep. Um, and there's five packs, so enough to do most tool chests yep. that you get. And I, I mean, I don't know, maybe we're on our own here, but... It just looks all really, over that. really, really nice. Especially because, you know, some people just toolboxes and they just have tabs. Yes. So they can quickly, you know, make... I mean, have to, it takes a decent sized table or bench to make it into a good workspace. But yeah. It just looks very, very, very yeah, nice. Um, yeah. And especially when you're in transit, if you were to, no banging around as well. Everything is just secure. Everything about it is right. The only thing, from my point of view, is I've got such a mess, I'm going to have to have a bit of a stock taker home and sort of be like, yeah, sort it out. I don't need five eight mil Allen keys, come on, just like <laughs> get rid yeah. of some of them. Yeah, I'd quite like to do it. I'd quite like to have a, sh a shadow board, yeah. but have it foam, like everything up on the mm. wall. It would look good. But like I said, I genuinely, you know, 
I don't know if I've got. I trust myself to do a good job of it. I reckon. I think you, it would I just reckon be you do a wicked job. Of it. <laughs> you talk I mean, yourself down. I no. think you do a wicked job. But we should we should do this because maybe I think I've got a thing you would do. You're into your DIY. Yeah. I reckon you do a really good job of it. Maybe we each get a sheet this big. We just same tools. Who can make the best job of it? Maybe we right, feature it as like it. a little discussion point. Well, I'll get on Amazon tomorrow. But I, I mean, I'll, I'll give it the best shot. Yeah. But I'm just like, literally, if I try and take a photo or anything artistic, yeah. it's just crap. Everything We I... can fix this, Henry. <laughs> we can fix it. Yeah. You can fix the bikes, we can fix you. It's all yeah. good. We'll, we'll practice, practice, practice. No problem. Um, speaking of some stuff that definitely didn't look crap, yeah. the new Marzocchi forks. Oh, man. The purple ones, yeah? Yeah, the purple ones. <sighs> And it seems like all of these, so, you know, the Rock Shock's red. Is it just us to be excited about Mars Hockey? Kind of feels like they're really back again. They are back again. Yeah. Those um, Z1 forks look yeah. absolutely fantastic. And actually, to be fair to Mars Hockey, the Grip 2 damper, the Grip damper, mm. is basically a refurbed version of the damper they were running previous to being bought by Fox. Yeah, and okay. A, yeah. A so, so it's IRP not that far different. It's just yeah, self bleeding port or self regulatory port. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think they do do some really cool stuff and it's great to see them, you know, really kind of making a statement of intent. Oh yeah, yeah and, big um, time. Yeah, no, they did look fantastic. So it was on Tyler's bike, wasn't it? Tyler McCall. Yes, it was. The purple one. A couple of Thomas Janon as well. Yeah. And there were so many, you know, we could have a little selection of the bikes that were on display at Rampage. Mm. Brandon Seminux looked amazing, oh, so did Brett Readers. I mean, they were man, just everywhere. What a run. That guy's a robot. I'm, I'm pretty sure he is like Terminator. You know, <laughs> sent yeah. back through time to sort of take care of free ride or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, and that's not all out of Rampage. There was the Troy Lee D4, long oh, yeah. awaited. I remember watching, I think... I think I've like, kind of seen little hints of it here and there, but you can never be sure if it was actually it. Yeah, I mean, the D3, I remember watching Three Minute Gaps probably about six, yeah. mo six months ago, which I think was like 2009, yeah. and they had the D3 on. Yeah. It's been around for a while. It's had re updates in that time, yeah. but the silhouette has been the it's, same. It's, it's funny, yeah, it has been around that long, but it didn't, really long still time. doesn't look that dated when you look at it. It's great. With the amount of vents and shape on it, but... Yeah, the D4. Not a full release yet from the D4. Mm. It's, but it does look soon. It looks pretty much ready to go. I reckon. A little in, a source inside tells me um, it's on its way. So we should we should hear the full info anytime now. If you've seen it around page, you know it's going to drop yeah. anytime soon. Yeah, look forward to that. Um, more tools actually in the news. And um, Abbey Tools, everyone's favourite kind of um, sort of niche tool manufacturer to make mm. the super anodized like trick stuff. They're making a full toolbox. Yes. Um, it's a full team issue, pro spec. Um, look at it. This is it right here. It's got all the tools yeah. inside. It comes with its own pellet case. I think, looking at it, it looks like you can have your name put on it as well. I mean, that's probably maybe a bridge too far for me personally. Well, I don't know. <laughs> You've got milk that sort of stuff, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's like you know, getting some pens made up at home. There's plenty of room to put quinol on there. <laughs> <laughs> it does look good, and it's already come with the Kaizen foam cut. Yeah, already done. So you don't have to mess relief. it up. Yeah, I mean, to me, it's like saying, oh, Henry, yeah. cutting your own hair isn't that hard. But it would look crap. <laughs> like, let the professionals do it, you know? And um, and also I really like because they've taken a really liberal liberal approach to what they put in it. Yeah, it's not just their own tools, is it? All sorts. Yeah, oh, I love those Nipex locking pliers. Yeah, super that's, uh, cool. That's been an adjuster for many things it shouldn't adjust for many years for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, so I've seen uh, the colour telltale sign of uh, we're at Allen Keys in there as well. Yeah. Which is nice. Um, they're quite trick, actually. Yeah, they're color coded. Do. Almost. Really, really good. And yeah, I mean, where do you go? It's a full set, ready to go, and I think it's uh, one thousand three hundred and fifty US dollars. Uh, I'm guessing that's quite a lot less than what it would cost if you bought all the tools individually, and the foam, and the pelly case, and all of the stuff, and priced it up. But and it actually comes with your own pot of Abbey Tools Salty Bike Mechanic Mustache Cream. <laughs> to just, oh, you know, I mean, it's uh, maybe playing on a cliche yeah. there, moving yeah. on. No, that's pretty good. <laughs> Next up. Shimano have filed a really interesting patent hmm. for, sorry, patent. Yep. For ABS systems on bikes. As in anti-brake lock An stuff. Anti-lock braking anti system, yeah. 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 Okay. Which is really, yeah. really interesting. I mean, for, yeah, you're going to always talk about it, but, you know, for like a cargo-loaded e-bike, I imagine it's going to be really, really useful. Yeah. But it kind of opens up the question, you know, where will this end up? Will it almost be like traction control was in Formula One where they had to like tone it back? It's yeah, so that's an interesting point. Yeah. Talking about the Formula One lightness, yeah, mm. I guess it could be. Because imagine um, riding in the wet and just being like, suddenly rear brake modulation, you know, you could just have at it. I tell you what, it, it, I mean, I hate to talk about our skinny wheeled cousins, but it could be brilliant for road bikes. It could be brilliant for road bikes. I'd imagine that's where we, we might see it first, but, mm -hmm. um, and e-bikes as well, really, because uh, since I've been riding one of those, 
things, um, you, you end up on the brakes a hell of a lot more. You go yeah. through brake pads and that, and locking wheels up silly because you're using much bigger disc rotors, four piston brakes. Yeah, I could see the advantages if someone can make that system work. Yeah, I think it's really cool. It'd certainly be interesting to see you know where it leads. Yeah, if nothing else. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, keep an eye on that one. That's for sure. And last up in the news is a new kind of hot take from uh, Caliber Bikes, who mm. are a budget friendly full suspension brand. Oh man, it looks and mean as well. Yeah, it does look yeah. really, really good. I mean, black, black bike and gumball. Black on black on black on black with gumball tires. It does look really, really yeah. cool. Limited edition though. Yeah. So uh, best get them, get them quick. Yeah, bargain. I think they're uh, under a grand, aren't they? I think it's, it's like insanely so good, good value for the money. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, Caliber Bikes once again doing it. Okay, it's that time again. It's time for Bike Cave. This is where you clearly keep your mountain bikes, where you work on them, where you change your fork seals, and where you get tire sealant all over the floor. If you've got a Bike Cave, take some pictures of it and send it in. There's a little link right at the bottom of the screen there. Um, first up this week is from Will in, uh, is that Ontario, Canada? I guess so, or maybe not. Yeah. Let's just say Canada, Canada. be safe. It's a big place. Don't want a second guess. <laughs> yeah, so it is. Uh, a mountain biker who also rides road and BMX, the kids are hooked up riding BMX and mountain bikes. God, there's a lot of bikes in there. And snowboards, by looks of it, too. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess you're in a prime country for that. But more importantly, I can see a beer fridge in the background there with loads of stickers all over it. And I can see a really nice tool cabinet as well. And it looks like it must be on wheels. It looks like it's got its own sort of bench top on it. It's slid oh, underneath. Yeah. So it does. So you can move it out around the room. Um, bench grinder. whole selection of... Uh, it looks more like screwdrivers and stuff, actually, on the back there. Snowboarders, though. Ah, yeah. That's what they need. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There's a nice More giant bikes. anthem there. Nice. Giant, oh, giant BMX. Oh, yeah. Was it STP or something? Yeah. Oh, rigid forks, though. Pretty cool. Because apparently those STPs, they've stopped making the frames, but they've got some in reserve for team riders for the next couple of years. Oh, that's interesting. Like, held back. Oh, it's definitely. It's way back. They're quite long, actually, as far as jump bikes go. Um, yeah, escape deck. In fact, there's a lot of... Uh, there's a couple of Harrow BMXs as well. Three, four, five, five scooters, lawnmower. Nice little setup. Yeah, lots, lots, of, lots of stuff in here. Lots, lots of eye of candy. Yeah. It looks like you've got a steel leaf blower over the back. Um, in fact, all the steel tools. Look at the colours. I love a steel leaf blower. <laughs> They're very useful. I can tell. Like, yeah. So passionate about it. <laughs> no more raking. Raking's in mugs. Raking's game. for losers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fire up the two stroke, and clear the garden out. <laughs> Works a treat. Also quite good in the house as well. It just it blows everything out, like plates and knives and stuff as well. So <laughs> kind of be careful. With it. <laughs> it does look really good, almost like kitchen cabinets. That's they are, of, yeah, yeah. It's, it's really high end. Got a screen in an office maybe. Yeah. Yeah, super cool. In fact, it looks like uh, might have been watching a bike cave or something. Oh yeah. At the back on the screen there. Nice little setup you got there. Okay, so over to uh, Greg in Ireland. Uh, this is a bit more familiar. Good old garden shed. Got your carcher down there, you've got your Stanley toolbox, and you've got your little pegboard on the side of the shed. Trusty Black and Decker. Is, it, is that a Black and Decker? Or is that a Milwaukee? I don't know. Can't tell in this light. We've got good on there. Is that a. No, uh, that's a work stand. That's a work yeah. stand. I'd stuff yeah. on the wall, I guess. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, God, it must have taken us to like wide angle lens to get back here, <laughs> get that shot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fun work in progress. Through the roof. <laughs> yeah, that would be a good sign, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh. No, look, Scott got all your um, sealants and disposables up on that, or consumables up on that left hand side. Yeah. Yeah, cool, man. So, also, power being installed soon so you can fit a small compressor and a beer fridge. Perfect. How are you going to get that in there? Mate, he's, he's in, in, you know. Oh, actually, yeah, it's a lot way. bigger oh, from that angle. Go. Yeah, there we go. Nice Santa Cruz taking up almost, almost to the ceiling. You can't get a bigger, longer, was, lower slack yeah, bike, can say. you? That's <laughs> as long, lower slack as you can get. Yeah, he's tapping that one, that one. Whoa, oh my God. Look at that. So where's this one? Kevin in Durango. Holy oh, moly. Man. They have the best garages in Durango. Oh, all Colorado people have just got, look at that Milwaukee tool set. Oh my That's God. a lot. That a is a lot, lot, lot of... On. Lot of money's worth of tools, and I'm guessing you must be severely into motorsport of some kind to have all of that. Yeah, that is a serious amount of kit. What is that on that shelf there? Is that is that all drills? I think it's and drills batteries and stuff. The, like yeah. Oh yeah, in the little holsters. Yeah. yeah, yeah, loads of Milwaukee tools. I like Milwaukee stuff. My electrician uh, switched over from Makita to Milwaukee, and he uh, he kindly gave me his old impact driver, uh, which does look like it's been thrown out of an aeroplane. But it still works. Oh, lovely. Oh, yeah, nice. it goes, goes great. 
But uh, yeah, he won't stop shutting up about Milwaukee. Apparently, it's like the brand Just, to that's, get. That's yeah. your boy. Yeah, nice stuff. I'm pretty naive when it comes to drills and everything. Do you know what I mean? Like actual hand tools yeah. and all that sort of stuff. I know about leaf blowers. Yeah. I got my joke about that in, and that's it. That's all I got. That's what I bring to the table. Milwaukee, I thought was a sports team. I think they. I think, <laughs> I think they are. I think they are. Well, I think um, I don't think there's like a hierarchy as such because obviously everyone's gonna have different tools for whatever they need them for, mm-hmm. and they're all really good. But I kind of see the hierarchy. If there was a hierarchy, being um, Dewalt, Makita, and Milwaukee, I'm sure I'm gonna get oh. drilled down for that. Um, I've actually got. Say drilled down. A drill down. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. See what I did there. Um, <laughs> Um, I'm probably going to get hammered for that one. I'll do it again. Um, <laughs> but, but seriously, I, I, I've got a bit of everything, so I don't. I just buy what works at the time. So I'm not one of those people that sticks to one brand. Yeah. I just get what I need. Um, but I would be interested. What, what do you guys think is best out there? DeWalt, Milwaukee, or Makita? Completely irrelevant question to bikes, but let us know anyway. Underneath. Um, next up. Um, oh, this is the same place, just different side. Okay, so you've got your POC body armor in there, loads of full face helmets. Oh, he's got one of those Yeti coolers. Apparently, oh, nice. they're amazing as well. And it's nothing to do with Yeti, the bike company. Oh, is it not? Nope. It's a separate brand. <laughs> it's a separate brand. Isn't it funny? How, isn't it funny how you can make something? You can you can call something what you want. Yeah. And it being a completely funny, you know completely irrelevant, and it's fine to call it that. Like it is Yeti, fine. Yeti bikes and Yeti beer coolers. That's totally fine. Yeah. Cool yeah. guys. Yeah. Get it? Yeah. Really. <laughs> yeah. They are. God, well, coming I'm back at you. Coming today, aren't they? <laughs> oh, look at this one. Wow, it's like a little shrine. Oh. Amazing. I love your obsession with OSB. We, obviously, we like OSB. So is it the same place? Like a bit of sterling board. Um, it is. Yeah. It's like a whole other side it's to like, it. So, yeah. So that side, that's business. And that side, it's party. Yeah. It's <laughs> business cool. and party. Again, like another thing like that. I need, I need, <laughs> to, I need to stop doing this tonight. But no, it's... um, Yeah, like, talk about going through... It's like, you know, going through like different stages of Alpine. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty distinct. <laughs> Different vibes. So much stuff as well. Loads of bikes too. Always good to see. Um, and I like the fact you've got a nice little TV. Well, not so little, but a TV and a little sofa there so you can sit down and learn your tech. Awesome. Oh my oh god. My god. That's a, <laughs> and another angle. He's got a gym. You are taking Everything. a Michael. I'll tell you, Kevin. Oh my. That is Giddy insane. He's got a canoe. Yeah. Okay. Now, now I'm not even envious. I'm just straight out jealous. Yeah. Like, that is that is a proper bike cave. Wow. Holy moly. That is basically my dream to have somewhere like that sort of size. Yeah, okay, now, now I'm sick of it. <laughs> yeah, so, oh, and it's the end. Hey. Thank God for that. <laughs> now, keep them coming in. We absolutely love them. Any size, any shape. Could be under the stairs. In fact, if you've got your bike under stairs, send it in. We haven't seen one of those yet. Now it is time for Rewind. This is where we delve back into the history books of mountain biking with your submissions from those of yesteryear. So if you've got one at home, hit the upload link below and then we can have a look at it and get it on the show. So first up, we have Ross with his 1999 Cannondale Super 6 V Raven. Yeah. And this one is pretty good. He's modded it with kind of modern parts, but still kind of kept the character of the frame. And it does look pretty cool, eh? What do you think of it, Doddy? Oh, I always loved the Canada Super Vs, Delta Vs, and the Ravens. Um, the only thing I was never sure about on these, it was the seat post mount on the back. It always looked like it was going to break, but well, I guess it didn't. Like, it's obviously it's still, still on there, <laughs> doing the thing. But um, the old Cannondale head shocks, like, they looked a bit peculiar, but they worked so well. Mm-hmm. Um, they had, like, the needle bearings on the inside. That was pretty lefty fork, and they yep. used a similar system to that. Um, I, I really like them, and I had it right on this bike because I had the nice low pivot. The earlier ones had a high pivot and like a like cantilevered style swing arm, a bit more like you'd see on like uh, oranges and other single pivot bikes. But they'd refined on here. It was really active, the back end. In fact, I think it says, I uh, know oh it's just a Super V Raven. They used to say Super V Active on the change days on some of the models. Looks good. Um, like I was saying to you earlier, actually, I've got one of these sliced up in little sections in a Perspex cabinet in Mud Dot Cafe yeah. in Bristol. So that's a bike shop and a cafe. Really cool place. Uh, liking this. Looking good. Nice to see you're still using it as well, actually. Yeah, M- no, more to the cool. point, it's yeah, uh, yeah, not yeah. just an old bike. You actually modernised it and you're still riding it. Yeah, they're great. Work a treat. Oh, look at that bad boy. So this one's from um, Loren or Lauren. Um, and from Florida. At my local bike shop, I saw this and I thought of me, I thought of Doddy, as I was um, looking at these amazing retro bikes. 
Okay, so that original client, um, I forget the name, I say it's an attitude, I forget the name of the paint job on it, but Tinkawares raced this frame. I've actually got the client mug at home from Bike Ninja with this same graphics oh, well, on. Nice. Uh, the Spinergy four spoke wheels, well, actually eight spokes, is mirrored on the other side. Um, I always remember the spokes being quite sharp and being terrified. If you had a crash and got your arm stuck in there, it'd be like, see you later. It turned into yeah. like one arm peak. Well, that's when they thing. stopped doing road cycling, I think, eh? We're well, spitting the peloton, you know. They stop everything in road cycling. <laughs> so you get injured, didn't they? Yeah. What happened to road cycling? It used to be cool. You used to like uh, take drugs for different reasons. You used to take painkillers and drink bottles of brandy. Yeah. Just to like drown it out and then just carry I on. I just can't think of anything worse. Oh, I'm having a really horrible ride. Let's have a bottle of brandy. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, can, I completely agree. Harder men than me. Bad, like. But there's some classic iconic pictures of guys back in the day just to kill pain, like eating like entire baguettes and like drinking a bottle of wine. Mm -hmm. It's like raid chops, apparently. Yeah. They literally, yes, like, anything yes. they could the get, videos, yeah. they were so hungry and so desperate, they're just like, just give me it and just <laughs> chuck it in and carry on. Um, I kind of love that approach. It's yeah, I think cool. it's super cool. Uh, but yeah, that's a lovely piece of kit. And I've also noticed uh, it's got a Mag 21 SL tie model of the RockShox fork on the front there. Um, so that was a super exclusive one. Very nice. Oh, look at that. So that's a specialised, just, uh, just an S-Works of some kind. Stump jumper S-Works. that lugged? Carbon lugged? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and it's got the uh, spin forks on there. Uh, spin forks? Spin wheels. Idiot. Um, so they were carbon wheels and they had the hubs bonded in, but they had the rims bonded on as well. You know, that obviously Spengel's got a one-piece yep. design, so they don't have the rim, but obviously they're not rim brakes. Yep. So it's a more modern approach to the spin, but similar Super concept. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of thing. Um, and there's a stumpy FSR. That's nice. nice. It's, that it's, isn't it funny cool. that they, you know, they did this in like the early '90s, and they're still using the FSR design. Yeah. yeah. There's not many other bike brands. I mean, okay, Orange with a single pivot mm -hmm. is pretty much what they've always done. There's not many out there that have had a design they've done since the beginning. Yeah, I wonder if Stump Jumper hadn't got that horse link patent because they didn't come up with it. You know? No, well, horse line they did, but they kind of also commissioned, as far yeah. as I know, the horse to do it. But, but if that paint that didn't exist, I wonder if, because it, if it feels like there was all these different exciting systems, yeah, and then the paint didn't expire, and everyone was like, kind of, you know, converged upon it. Yeah, it's strange, isn't it? I, I mean, I kind of feel like, oh, well, someone would have got there first. Mm, yeah, they obviously did. They had the, the sort of the vision to see it. And yeah, well, people are still using it, and uh, now now it has expired. Even more people are using it. Mm. Again, it's a great thing because four bar works. Yeah, totally. It's simple. It works. Works under braking. Uh, you don't get too much chain growth. Great system. Yeah, no, it's fair. I mean, you you know, you obviously you know you know your retro tech mm. to the to the nth degree. Patent wise, do you think that there there have been other kind of? Do you think patents are sometimes kind of like they 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 disrupt the industry in, in a negative way sometimes or? Um, or do you think it's good yeah, because they kind of protect your assets? Kind of both. Yeah. I, I can say, so, so specialised, I think, have been accused of this over the years for, you know, um, protecting their patents. But you've you just got to think, as a business owner, like, you would, you would, really, do yeah. you would really do that. Um, although, you know, you could arguably say that in some cases there was the Café Roubaix thing, tiny yeah. little bike shop, wherever it was, Canada, I think, yeah. um, called Roubaix Cycles, named after the place Roubaix, the yeah. bike race goes through, <laughs> not named after Specialised Bike. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, in the end, Specialised admitted, like, oh, well, they didn't set out to do that, but they have copyright lawyers that just do that job, and mm. those people aren't necessarily thinking of the same picture as we are. Yeah. So, you know, you can see how it would have happened, but in the short time, I think it was really sad for yeah, I think it was that sad, shop yeah. owner. But, but those t-shirts are cool. They were, they were cool, yeah. I, <laughs> I did buy one, to be fair. Yeah, totally. um, but, um, but I think it got sorted out in the end, but it's, it's really easy to get the wrong end of the stick, yeah. this sort of thing. Um, but I'm just glad that it is available for people to use. Yep. This is great. And my new proof's got it on. And it yeah. works wicked. <laughs> totally. <laughs> okay, now it's time for Tech of the Week. Um, I didn't think I'd ever be saying tech of the week is a set of valve cores, but um, but here we go. Uh, on screen, you can see the Legion VMAX valve cores. Um, I think a few people tipped us off about this, saying, oh, you need to check these out. They're a new, a new valve core. It's a bigger bore, and you get more air into it. And you're like, yeah, yeah, it's just a valve core. But actually, uh, the design that's quite cool, and the thing that really drew me to it is the fact that the valve core on the inside of the actual valve stem yep. is hollow. So you, yes. you can get more air into it, and I think they say 300% more air, so you, they, they pretty much insinuate that you can inflate any tyre tubeless immediately with a pump, just because yeah. you're forcing so much more air in to seat the tyre. I imagine you get sealant through easily yeah, as well. Yeah, you get sealant through it, and interestingly as well, you can also remove sealant through it as well. 
How does that work? You can just suck it back out. But because it's got a little bit of um, tubing mm -hmm. on the inside of the tire that sits into the tire. So assuming you've oh, you could just compress the tire a bit. Yeah, assuming you're t you know you haven't left your sealant in there so long, it's turned into like the little sort of snot ball things. <laughs> you know that, that we could be, <laughs> you could be guilty of. Yeah, um, you could take it out again, which means if you're a regular tire changer or a racer that needs to swap tires, that could be really, well, I'll be hot really useful. That so it's very useful. Suck it out, and I was like, yeah. whoa, that's actually probably yeah. cool. And I think uh, this is the first time I've felt excited about valve stems since. Uh, the PT's one said they were doing the Chris King colours, just because that's cool. Um, and then the milk kit system, because the milk kit system, you can take the valve core out of the valve stem and you don't lose any air, which is equally as great. Yeah. It's just got its own little it's flap. Got the, yeah, the, it's got a little flap over the bottom. Now, just playing devil's avocado, as I've been known to yeah, do. You do it very well. This is super cool to see. Mm -hmm. It's great that people are thinking about kind of your bread and butter problems and yeah. the irritation of a gunked up valve or whatever. Yeah. But is this not all, all kind of backwards engineering because bike manufacturers want to spec Presta valves so their bikes look yeah, more expensive? Yeah, but the Schrader valves. Right, the Schrader, Schrader valves. Yeah. We, we have the valve to I make I feel it. like we've been down this road before yeah. with people. And I think the only reason we ended up the way we are is because of rim designs got so narrow, narrow that yeah. Presta valves made more sense uh, now that we're back to wide ones. Yeah, I like that. I heard, That's a very good point. I've heard kind of the industry ban, sorry, the, the rumour being branded around, and I don't know how much truth is in it, mm. but that from the way they want bikes to be perceived to people that perhaps aren't so much into mountain biking is that normally Presta valves are the notion of quality. People say, oh, you know, get them onto the thin valves, all those racing valves, you know? And obviously yeah, I can kind of see that. So I don't know if it's perhaps, like I said, a really, really good solution to a problem that definitely exists yeah but if the problem that exists isn't isn't, isn't a big workaround yeah and that's 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 quite an interesting point but, yeah. um you know that stands uh, stands no tubes stands um they make schrader tubeless valves yeah so you can you can buy, yeah, you can buy that stuff already up. if your rims are drilled for them um so if you've ever wondered that and you've got schrader drilled Rims, you can buy those already, yeah. they do exist. Uh, but yeah, that is an interesting point. Mm. Yeah. But I do think it looks fantastic. It's not to take away from these Legion valves. They've, it appears a, they've done it really well. Yeah, they have done it really yeah. well, I think. Um, nice system, but yeah, interesting. Uh, what do you guys think about valves? Should we be using Schrader valves? Uh, let us know down, let us know down there even. Uh, and what do you think of Presta valves? Uh, do you get annoyed by them gunking up with tubeless solution? What do you think of the Legion ones? Uh, let us know in the comments. And that is it for another week's tech show. I hope you had a good time watching it. If you want to stick with the channel, I'm going to throw to a live brake bleed I did that came out at the weekend, which basically is a Shimano system from front to back all the way through how to bleed one. Uh, that's the one you want to follow, that's for sure, yeah. Uh, I'm going to throw you down to uh, Samuel's Ferrari Red Nuke Proof Mega oh. 290C. Right down here, just because I really like the colour. Mother it's may I, it does I'm look fantastic. Pretty simple at heart. <laughs> Yeah. So I actually saw that someone posted on the Nuke Proof uh, account. Sorry, I changed the subject here for a minute, but let's keep this rolling. Um, that I actually said that they didn't like it. I was like, what? How could you not like it? It's like when people um, say they don't like chocolate. It's like, oh, come on. Yeah, you're lying. Everyone likes chocolate. You're, you're lying. You're yeah, lying. Yeah, it's just, yeah. anyway, <laughs> anyway, anyway, thanks for liking the show and all that stuff. See you later. <laughs>